Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Lori Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, we'll exhibit artistry that has woven its way into history. Then, April's almost over, so May may be the month to restore your smile, and we can help. Neil Zerker is here with the best trips to take once you've topped off your tank. Plus, nurse practitioners are an important part of your path for making your way home from the hospital, we'll explain. And retiring and want to live part-time in a sunny state, we'll give you our take on its taxes. It's time to get you owing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. Want to learn to weave? Then we have a looming opportunity for you. Kirsten Fitzgerald has joined us to share the ins and outs of weaving for amateurs. Kirsten is a museum educator in the textiles department at Hale Farm and Village. Welcome to our show. Thank you. So there's actually a class that people can go to to find more about yes. uh, how, to, how to do this weaving, but first let's just sort of take a look at the loom that you have here. Sure, this is a type of tabletop loom. It's called a rigid heddle loom. And it is a great loom to start learning to weave on because it uses basic techniques. It's low cost, and as you can see, it's very small, so it's very, very space effective. All right. Then I know a Hale Farm and Village talks about history. So is this yes. the kind of loom that they would have used way back then? <laughs> well, a rigid heddle loom is a modern version of an antique loom, like this loom right here. This is called a box loom or a tape loom and that would have been used to make narrow bands of cloth, whereas the rigid heddle loom was designed to make it easier to weave. Okay, so how does it work? Well, you can see all of my threads have already been put on the loom, and so this is my heddle here. What I do is I lift it up like this, and this makes the space right in between there. I take my shuttle, which has my weaving thread on, take it right through that space, and I want to keep my angle at 45 degrees and hold onto the edge so that my cloth doesn't pull in tight and narrow. And I pick my head all up and nice and tight next to that row, right there like that. Wow. Wow. Very easy. <laughs> it, it, it does actually look very easy. So I remember the, the kind of pot holders you'd make on those little tiny looms and you had to yes. actually take some and go in and out and in and out. Yes. So this, this heddle takes away all that problem. Yes, absolutely. So if you didn't have that, as you could see, you'd have to go in and out all that. But when the heddle is up here, your threads are, are separated. And so when I move my heddle to the bottom space, all the threads that were on top have now switched places with the threads on the bottom. Wow. So you just have to remember which way your heddle has to be yes, in exactly. order to, to do the next yes, row. Yes, you do. And you go back and forth. So, right. so you had it up before, so now, now it's, it's down. down. Right. And you just do the same thing going the other direction. Yes. Okay, can I try? Yes, absolutely. Oh, oh no, I might run it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you take it right through there. Good job. Okay, so you said 45 degree right, angle. Right, hold on to your edge. Just at the corner like that? Yeah, so that way it doesn't pull in and then it won't get narrower. Then you can just, you can just let go of it after you hold on. So you just want to hold it on when you pull it through. Oh, okay. Then you grab the two sides there. Yep, just like that. You're and leaving. then it has to go back up again for the next round. Right. Woo. <laughs> it wasn't so hard at all, no, it's actually. Very easy. <laughs> So Good this job. is a pretty small looking loom. So does it only make small items? Well, you can make items as wide as your loom is. If you wanted to make something bigger, then what you would do is make multiple items and sew them together. Okay, we got a couple examples here, right? I do, these are some examples of items that can be made on a rigid heddle loom. So this is a kitchen towel that's right here. This is a placemat or table mat, and then this beautiful scarf. And, and what we were working on, what you were working on here is a dishcloth. Oh, okay, that's what we, in calves colors. In calves colors, so, yes, calves. absolutely. <laughs> so, and you've got this upcoming class now, so we tell do. us about when that is. All right, so our workshop uh, for weaving will be held at Hale Farm and Village on Saturday, May 10th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The cost is $72, and each participant will have their own loom to work on and be able to take home a finished piece. And in addition, they'll also get a small handheld loom that they get to take home and to continue weaving. 
All right, and it's not just weaving that, that Hale Farm has classes on. What are some of the other areas? Well, we also offer workshops on spinning. We have a natural dye garden, so we have natural dyeing, we have pottery, glass blowing, and they're great generational activities, as well as our youth maker camps this year as well for pottery and brew making. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so all those old skills that nobody knows anymore. That's right. <laughs> we need to learn them again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This craft could easily weave its way into your heart because it's so easy to do. To find out more or to register for any of the classes, use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Kirsten for coaching us on this creative craft. Thank thanks. you for having me. For more information, call Hale Farm and Village at 330-666-3711 or click to www.halefarm.org. Next, a beautiful smile? Yes, you may. But first, you've heard of UFOs in space, unidentified flying objects, but here on Earth, this acronym has another identity for those nimble with needlework. Can you spell out the answer? We'll have it all sewn up when we return. What do the first 100 days of President Trump mean if you have $500,000 or more to invest? It means unique challenges and exceptional opportunities. I'm Jim Lineweaver, president of Lineweaver Financial Group. Our complimentary new panel discussion and dinner is a must attend for qualified investors. It's packed with strategies to preserve and grow wealth under the new administration offered by three experts with more than 90 combined years of financial tax and estate planning experience. Please join us at award-winning Lockkeeper's Restaurant in Valley View. Seating is limited, so call today. The number's on your screen or you can visit us at lineweaver.net. For those embroiled in embroidery or other natures of needlework, a UFO is easily identified. It indicates an un finished object. Tomorrow is May 1st and May just may be the month to make over your smile. Dennis, Steve Marsh is here with ways to make your teeth look terrific for any upcoming occasion. You know, Lori, I, I watched that last segment here and when I was five years old, I have a sister who's 17 years older and speaking of occasions, when she was getting married and I was five, I actually made 25 pot holders. My mom helped me, helped me take them off the loom and then uh -huh. I actually, she taught me to sew and I sewed them together and we made it into a mini afghan. Oh my. Which is a sewing tour apart. She ended up having pot holders for a, for a lifetime. <laughs> and I couldn't resist telling you that story. <laughs> well, occasions like that, like weddings and reunions and graduations, May is kind of the month that begins all of this summer celebration, right? You know, the sun comes out, the Indians play ball. Uh, it's a time uh, that people want to get married. We see class reunions, family reunions. And we thought we'd tell some stories about some of those things. You know, deadlines help a person. If you know you have a class reunion in September, you want to look at your best, that's one of the, the things that spurs people on to taking care of their teeth. Absolutely. And because of those events like weddings, there's pictures being taken and those last a lifetime. Right. And so there was a patient who came to me uh, with her mom and she was getting married six weeks from the time she met me. She had a big space between her teeth her whole lifetime. She was really unhappy with the space. And the mom said, this is sort of her dowry. She'd rather take care of her teeth and then spend some money as, as well on the wedding. Um, we did some reshaping. That was done with four porcelain veneers, Lori. Closed the space. Again, reshaping took place. We didn't have time, obviously, for orthodontics. And there's the, the bride. She mm. said it was the happiest day of her life. And um, after the wedding, she sent us some pictures because she was so thrilled with how she looked. Wow. And it's not always the bride that wants to look good at weddings either. No, and you know, sometimes it's a whole family. And last year, a whole family came in. The bride only needed some Zoom whitening. That was easy, mm -hmm. hour and a half, and she was out. But we also wanted to take care of her sister. Her sister was the maid of honor. So we did some gum contouring. I've mentioned that before with the diode laser. It lengthens the teeth at the top. You can see they were uneven, and the lowers had uh, changed a lot over the years. She had had braces. She was now in her 30s. We did some reshaping. We did some bonding on both the lower and the upper. And literally, in about two hours, we were able to accomplish that change that she had said had bothered her for about the last 15 years. Hmm. So that was the maid. But there's also a mother of the bride. And the mother of the bride, years ago, had suffered trauma. And you can see in the before picture, that's a tooth that had had a root canal. And that's a ceramic post that we often use today because today's crowns and veneers are translucent, meaning the light shows through. So most teeth that have had root canals turn dark. So we did the ceramic post. 
We did a full crown on that tooth. We did a veneer on the other, just some reshaping. Basically just took care of those teeth with two teeth with reshaping. And dad. So can't dad, let dad out, no. Can't <laughs> let dad out. And mom and the daughters insisted that dad come along. His teeth had broken down over the years. Real athletic, strong guy, worked out, ground his teeth, broke some. And that was just with four uh, porcelain veneers. We knew the wedding was coming up in six weeks, so I asked our lab uh, and some friends there who are real artists to sort of move that along a lot more quickly. Sometimes it takes two to three weeks to get crowns or veneers back. In that case, we were able to do it in, uh, in one week. This is a young woman who's, again, in her 30s, had let her teeth go. She also had had braces. Teeth had shifted. They had shortened and cracked. And again, this is somebody we did eight veneers, lower recontouring. Um, and made a world of difference. And I can't tell you that when some of these young people have come to me, and parents, who've said, listen, the pictures don't only last a lifetime for the bride, but also for the family, and you know how we like to look at those pictures, it made a world of difference. So whether it's a reunion or a wedding, uh, it just means a lot to the patient and to us as well. Yeah, those are great makeovers, so. Thank you. There's no may be about it. May may just be the time to take care of your teeth and create a sensational smile to greet the summer season. For help, give Steve a call. His number's next. See what Dr. Stephen Marsh can do for your smile by calling 440-461-1003 or visit www.clevelandsmiles.com. Next, great getaways. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. Discover the benefits of taking supplements in your 50s and beyond at a presentation by Dr. Francois Aiden, Medical Director of University Hospitals Integrative Health Network. This free event takes place on Tuesday, May 9th at 6 p.m. at the UH Ahuja Medical Center. Seating is limited, so to register, call 216-285-4069. His name is synonymous with great getaways that are close by and super cool. Neil Zerker is in the driver's seat today to steer us to a few of the best of the one tank trips that are featured in his book of the same name. So welcome to the show Well, thank here. you so much. It's nice to be here. You're talking about the best of. There's been so yeah. many. How do you, in the world do you pick something? Well, I started in television here in Cleveland in 1962, and I finally quit last November. So it's been a long time, and I got to travel a lot of miles in those years. And when we finally stopped, I decided we should, should go back and take a look at like the last 30 or 40 years of places we'd traveled and try to find the best. Mm -hmm. And that's what we came up with is a book with about a hundred of the best trips we took. Okay. Now, we didn't go to all the major amusement parks and things like everybody that. Knows everybody about those, knows right? about those. We tried to find places that people weren't aware of. Okay. And maybe they'd never heard of, like the Titan Aircraft Company over in Ashtabula County. Okay. How many people know that we still make airplanes here in Ohio? <laughs> Not and many, Especially sure. World War II fighter planes. These are actually a three-quarter size scale of the World War II P-51 Mustang. They make it tighten, and, and the amazing part about this is they have a plant there on Route 45, and they give free tours of the plant. So you can see how the planes are so actually it, made. Yeah, it's a great idea for kids and people that want to learn about airplanes, or they just like airplanes. And if okay. you're lucky, you go out there on a day that they're finishing one, you might see one come and take off or Ooh, land right there testing, huh? down the road. So it's that kind of a place we went to that we, we tried to find places that, that people might not think about. Uh, uh, Next one is Sylvania, Ohio, Sylvania, right? Ohio, out near Toledo. Sylvania, Ohio, wonderful place up there, Fossil Park. Okay. How many people like to take their kids and go out and find rocks, especially if they have trilobites or mm -hmm. those little fossils in them? And up there in Sylvania, it's one of two places in the entire world that you can find these huge deposits of these fossils. And the city operates this park, and it's a free park. And the, what the kids find there, they can take home. Oh it's boy. an incredible place to go. So where's the other place in the world? The other place is in, in England. Okay. Well, and this is much closer for much, us. Much, much closer. <laughs> you don't have to fly across the ocean. So the trilobites, what else do you find? Well, I, you're gonna, I knew you'd pay me down. That. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, I've got, there, let's there, see, there are some Devonian other, era. Thank you, Devonian era. <laughs> trilobites, 
corals. I can't pronounce well, the rest the, of them. So. Ohio used to be at the bottom of a sea oh, millions of years okay. ago, and this is one of the areas that it was. And this quarry up in Sylvania, Ohio, is one of the settlements where they've just found all kinds of these these fossils. Yeah, that would be and cool. kids find them every day. I mean, that's it's not just something once in a while. Well, the day we were there, some youngster found one. It was worth like $75. Oh, my goodness. So it is worthwhile. Third stop, we're going out of the state of Ohio, right? Out of the state of Ohio over to New York State. Mm -hmm. And over there is the last, probably the only place in the northeast United States that you can go on an underground boat ride. And it's right along the Erie Canal, right at Lockport, New York. And it's in just an incredible ride. It was a tunnel that was built in the 1800s to supply water. But when they took the water out and didn't need it anymore, they found they had a tunnel there, and some of the water stayed in there, and it's it's dead. I mean, there's nothing grows in it. It's an interesting boat ride, and it's it's kind of a neat thing to do on a summer, hot summer day. Uh, I wish we had time to go through all 100, uh, but we don't. So they're going to have to buy your book for that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here and talking about all these Thank things. Thank you so, so much. We're going to hold the book up here now. All of these excursions are timeless treasures, just like our tour guide. My thanks to Neil Zerker for letting us all ride along. And if you want more of the best of one tank trips, get your own copy of the book by using the information that's coming up next. To order the book, call Gray and Company Publishers at 216-431-2665 or click to www.grayco.com. Next, help in healing to make your way back home. It's time to get up and go, an exercise segment on golden opportunities. Hey everybody, it's Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness and today we're gonna to show you how to strengthen those ever important shoulder muscles. You ready to go? I am absolutely ready to go. Let's do it. We have exercise bands here. This is called a front raise using our exercise band. What we're gonna do is we're gonna step on the center of the band. Okay, we wanna again offset our feet so that way we make sure we stay nice and balanced. Maintain very good posture. All we're gonna do is simply bring the handle of the band up to about shoulder height and then lower it back down to your thigh, okay? Again, we're looking for 15 to 20 repetitions on this one. Use slow and controlled movements and make sure you're breathing. How you feeling, Lori? Oh, that's tough. That's actually. a good one. Yeah, that's a good Lori one. And actually, Lori is doing a very good variation of this exercise where she's using both arms together. So you can do either individually or like Lori's doing here, you can do them both together. Cut time in half. That's right, fantastic. <laughs> All right, everybody, 12 to 15, two to three sets. And now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 6105 Parkland Boulevard, Suite 140, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 44124. There's no place like home, and that's especially true if you've had a stay in the hospital. So how can you get home safely, but sooner? Doctorate Nurse Practitioner Lori Margavichis has joined us in the UH Broadcast Center to tell us about a program that works to do just that. In addition to being a certified nurse practitioner, Lori is also a department educator in University Hospital's Center for Lifelong Health Post-Acute Services. Wow, what a title. <laughs> so this program is in place in actually skilled nursing facilities, right? Correct. So I thought we were talking about getting patients back home. So. Unfortunately, a lot of people aren't re ready to return home right from the hospital. Um, a lot of folks, particularly the frail elderly, just aren't ready to make that transition yet. So they're sent to skilled nursing facilities instead where a medical team can monitor their care as they progress through therapy um, with the hopes of returning home safely. Okay, so you're following them as they're getting better there. Correct. So then how does that program actually work? So when in the determination is made that a hospitalized patient needs to go to a skilled nursing facility, the hospital social worker will make a trip to the patient at the bedside and bring a list of all the skilled nursing facilities in the area where the patient wants to rehab. Now UH uses Medicare's five-star five rating system to choose um, specific medical facilities in the area, skilled nursing facilities to send um, our team of nurse practitioners and doctors to to practice to monitor the care so we can get the patients transitioned to home safely. Okay, are they UH facilities or not necessarily? They're non-UH facilities but chose specifically for the level of care that they provide. So UH only works with facilities that have a three star rating or above. Okay, so the better ones of course. So now are there nurse practitioners in each of those facilities? So we pair nurse practitioner and physician teams up in two in each 
pair is sent assigned to two to three facilities. So we're not always in the facility, but one of the medical providers is in the facility two to three days a week. And we can be there more often if we need to be. Okay, so what happens though if a patient is in a facility, there's some kind of issue and a nurse practitioner isn't there right away, you know, right on, on premise? So remember that we only work with, this, with the select skilled nursing facilities. So the nurses in the facilities are doing their own um, physical exams and when they notice a change in the patient's condition, they call us right away. So one of our team members, either the nurse practitioner or the physician, is on call 24-7 to respond to any um, acute issues. Okay, so we've talked about sort of the transition from the hospital to the facility, the nursing home. What about now from that nursing home to home? So in this setting, the nurse practitioner actually becomes um, a temporary primary care provider for the patient. And then when we're ready to discharge the patient to home, the nurse practitioner writes up a discharge summary and sends it to the primary care provider in the community and transfers the medical care back to them. So there's a continuity of care there. And then we would also in include our last physical exam results, um, a current list of medications, and the last uh, lab results um, for the, the physician to refer back to. And then a staff member in our department would call the patient once they get home to make sure they transition smoothly, to make sure they were able to get their prescriptions filled, they have a ride to their um, follow-up appointment, and all the equipment that they needed was delivered. Okay, sounds like a great program for the patients. Skilled nursing staff, nurse practitioners, and physicians, UH provides a collaborative approach to patient care from hospital to home and everywhere in between. And the most valuable players on this team, I vote for the nurse practitioners who are monitoring your every move to help you move out of skilled nursing care and into your home sweet home. My thanks to Lori for joining us today. Learn more by calling the Center for Lifelong Health at University Hospitals at 1-844-312-LIFE. That's 5433. Or visit their website www.uhhospitals.org slash lifelong health. Next, location, location, location. Right now, proton therapy, a revolutionary treatment for many types of cancer, is available for the first time in Ohio and only at University Hospital's Seidman Cancer Center. That's the future of cancer care. That's UH Seidman Cancer Center. Right now, the trusted experts of University Hospital's Seidman Cancer Center and the most advanced cancer-fighting technologies are in 17 community locations. That's leading-edge care, where you're most comfortable. That's UH Seidman Cancer Center. Did you miss a phone number or website? Then here's your second chance because we're gonna list all of that information again. Then we'll be back with tips about taxes when retiring out of state. You're getting ready to retire. You want to stay in Cleveland to be near family, but you want a nice, warm winter home, some place like Florida. With a little planning, you can save income taxes and maybe some of the cost of your new part-time home. Here to discuss this is my law partner, Michael Solomon. Hi, Lori. Oh, hey. I know Florida doesn't have an income tax, um, but Ohio does. So is there some way I can live part of the year in Florida and part of the year in Ohio and not pay any income taxes? Sure, if you do it right. Now, first of all, though, if you, if you earn a salary here in Ohio, or you own a business, you're earning income in Ohio, you're gonna pay Ohio income tax no matter where you're a resident. But if, uh, if you're just earning interest in, uh, income or dividend income or even retirement or IRA income, if you satisfy a residency out of Ohio, let's say in Florida, using that as an example, you won't have to pay Ohio income tax. To satisfy the Ohio rule, there's two tests, the subjective test, test and the math test. 
Okay, let's let's skip the math test okay. for now and talk okay. about the subjective one. So, what's involved in that? Uh, the subjective rule is that you have to, you have to be de you can be deemed a resident, let's say out of Ohio, as long in another state like Florida, as long as you have a, a t an intent to make Florida your permanent home. If you satisfy that rule, then you, you know, you're okay, but the trouble is it's so subjective. And if mm -hmm. you end up living both in Ohio and Florida, I'm not sure you want to just rely on the subjective test. Okay, so it looks like we have to do the math test. Yeah, that's right. So what's that? Okay, so Ohio has a math test that says if you have fewer than 213 contacts in Ohio, you, you, will, you won't be deemed an Ohio resident. And if you follow certain rules, it'll be a presumption they can't overcome. Okay. And that is, number one, you should uh, satisfy the 213 test. In other words, be have fewer than 213 contacts in Ohio, file an affidavit by May 30th of the next year. In that affidavit, you're going to mention that you're not domiciled in Ohio, you're somewhere else. And number two, you own a home somewhere else other than Ohio. And, and obviously, everything you say in the affidavit is true. And if you do all <laughs> that, then you should be, the, the presumption is you're not an Ohio resident. 213 contacts sounds like a lot of days. Well, it is. I mean, you know, a lot of, but it's not 213 days. It's 213 contacts, and it's slightly different meaning, and that helps you satisfy the rules. So, it's if you were just thinking days, it'd be you'd have to spend like five months out of Ohio, and that's a lot. 213 contacts, though, is different. What it is is, it has to be two consecutive days in Ohio to be a contact. So, let me give you an example. Let's say. You, uh, you live in Florida, you come in Ohio, you're there on Monday, you stay overnight on Monday, and then you stay on Tuesday. That's one contact, it's okay. not two days. If you come to Ohio on Monday, you get out of Ohio for a day, <laughs> and, you, and you come back on Wednesday, it's zero contact. So, it, you know, with the, right, bad as it sounds. Yeah, with the right planning, you could possibly avoid that rule. Okay, well, it certainly is complicated. If you're interested in more information, go to our website at ssnplaw.com or see Mike speak on this topic at a complimentary webinar presented with the Lime Weaver Financial Group at Lockkeepers in Valley View. The seminar will focus on ways to grow and protect your wealth under the Trump administration for those with 500000 or more to invest. It takes place Thursday, May 18th at 5.30 and again on Tuesday, May 23rd at 5.30. Call or go online to reserve your seat now. Call Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization. Or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us. Come back next week. But until then, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. If you'd like to join our kitchen conversation, visit our website, www.goldenopportunities.tv. Like us on Facebook. Call us at 440-742-GO-TV or email us at kitchen at goldenopportunities.tv. We'd love to hear from you. Golden opportunity.